scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on course at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Every time there is a supernatural manifestation in the Bible, in any form and in any fashion, it always translates to the glorification of the Christ. John chapter 2 and verse 11. That was a story of the first miracle recorded according to John's synoptic account. The miracle of turning water to wine in the wedding that is in Cana of Galilee. The Bible ends by saying this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and the disciples believed on him. The meaning of all this is that from today, your life will begin to bring glory to the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. That your life will be a series of unending manifestations of the glory of God. You will bear fruit in a way and a manner that will attract all and sundry to acknowledge the fact that God is at work in your life. Hallelujah. Every tree that does not have fruit also does not command the attention of men. Have you seen trees when it is not their season? You can pass the tree and not even remember that there is a tree there. But that same tree will be the center of attraction of children, adults, traders, all kinds of people. For instance, an orange tree. For instance, a mango tree. If it's not the season for its production, people can at best maybe play around the tree and just use it for shade but not when it begins to bring forth mango fruits sometimes by night you hear them dropping on their own accord and you see people rushing by morning trying to pick it the tree does not have a publicity strategy the tree does not speak it only bears fruit and it brings everybody from their house to its location hallelujah that reminds me of Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. It says, Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. I will always like to quote it from Amplified. It says, Arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. It says, Rise to a new light. Hallelujah. It says, For darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people but upon you the glory of the Lord shall arise and then verse 3 it says Gentiles hallelujah Gentiles you will not call them you will not look for them provided you are bearing fruit Gentiles shall come to your light and even their arrogant kings to the brightness of your rising may that be your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it like a believer. Say in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare. That from today. My life will bear fruit. Say it again. That from today. My life will bear fruit. Amen. Now for the purpose of our discussion this morning. I want us to be brief so we can have the time. To just pray. And then I speak over our lives like I said I would. Um, I want to share with you three secrets that 
cause a believer to be fruitful. There are three biblical secrets that if and when you follow and follow to the latter, there is a scriptural guarantee backed up by the integrity of God himself that your life would bear fruit. Are you ready? Number one, the first scriptural key that controls fruitful Christian living is that you must have a systemic, consistent prayer life. Please write it down. A systemic, consistent prayer life. Many people pray, but their prayer lives do not translate to a fruitful Christian life or living because number one, it is not systemic. Number two, it is not consistent. We largely pray in Africa as a matter of emotions and sentiments just to appease ourselves as though registering, you know, that spiritual register. And that is why there is a lot of dissipating of energy without results. Your prayer life must be consistent. It must be systemic. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 3 and verse 1, Acts chapter 3 and verse 1, we're exploring the first key that controls a fruitful life. Now, Peter and John went up together into the temple. The Bible says at the hour of prayer. Please say the hour of prayer. One more time. Say the hour of prayer. These gentlemen were so disciplined as mentored by the Lord Jesus Christ that regardless their schedules, regardless their family lives and their activities, they decided to dedicate portions of their days and their lives to, and to commit themselves to prayer. They even gave it timing that there is an hour in their life called the hour of prayer. Most believers do not have times that have been systematically dedicated towards spending time with the Lord in prayer. The hour of prayer. Mark chapter 1, please. Let's read from verse 34 to 37. This is Jesus using his own life to teach us. Let me read. And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils, the Bible says, and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him next verse and in the morning watch this now this is jesus himself rising up a great while before day he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed and simon and all they that were with him followed after him men will always follow after men of prayer men will always follow after men of prayer let's finish the scripture and when they had found him my god may this be someone's testimony they said unto him finish that scripture with me all men seek for thee how many men, men. does it include businessmen does it include wealthy men does it include tribesmen does it include kings does it include nobles when you are a man given to prayer all men will seek for you all men all kinds of men at various cadres of life and society show me a man that is given to systemic consistent prayer i show you a man that the world cannot deny eventually them a space must be created for you in life and destiny hallelujah are we learning this morning a systemic prayer life in Luke chapter 18 and verse 1 Jesus himself now is giving us another interesting parable and the Bible says he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray always to pray always to pray men God as God did not pray but when he became a man he prayed and since he returned back to heaven as a man, he's still at the right hand making intercession because men pray. Are we together? You want your life to bear fruit? No matter the point of your, um, your current state spiritually, immerse yourself, submit yourself with 
discipline and grace to the ministry of prayer and you will marvel and wonder at what your life evolves into in Acts chapter 2 and verse 42 there were about four constant practices that made the early church powerful the bible says they continued steadfastly number one in the apostles doctrine number two in fellowship number three in the breaking of bread number four in prayers hallelujah the key to benefiting from the ministry of prayer is to create a strategy for your consistency please write it is within your power to work with the spirit of god and intelligently create a strategy to ensure consistency that strategy can evolve for instance a young man or a young woman who is a student say on campus you have the liberty of time you are most likely being taken care of by your parents and so there are certain worries that are not your concern at that level of life you can design a prayer life that suits that level of life now when you become a worker an employee or an employer or a family man or a leader at any level the dynamics of your living would have changed you would need to reinvent a strategy that still allows you to be consistent for instance praying in the night for instance praying early in the morning for instance watching your life and apportioning certain days in a week certain days in a month certain quarters for dedicated moments of retreat and prayer but by all means it is your responsibility to work with the holy spirit and create a strategy per time per season there should be no excuse prayerlessness is pride because it is proof that you have declared that on your own unassisted by god you are able to make it and the Bible says, by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail. Let me repeat it one more time for your hearing and learning. Prayerlessness is pride. About the highest proof of humility the Bible records is to be prayerful. Because when you are a man given to prayer, you submit to the government of heaven declaring that you are helpless and incapacitated outside of the assistance of God hallelujah are we learning you want to bear fruit in your life in every aspect of your life you must be given to a systemic consistent prayer life and that means that everyone seated here under the sound of my voice an attack on your prayer life is an attack on your destiny it has nothing to do with whether you will be a preacher most people have allowed the zeal and dedication for prayer for preachers and they say i'm not a preacher my own is a businessman or i'm a mother with kids no prayer is for all men hallelujah an attack on your prayer life is a real spiritual attack that calls for immediate action even now whilst you are listening to me are you ready for number two what is the second key that would help any believer to bear fruit I wrote here and I want you to write it as exact as I've written so that when you are studying after now you will understand what I said the second key is to live by and build your life on the word of God. To live by and to build your life on the word of God. To live by and build your life on the word of God. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. Second key. Matthew 4 and verse 4. Jesus answered and said, it is written man shall not live by bread alone is that in your bible but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of god that means there are two ways we live on earth bread and his word bread and his word if you eat bread alone you are not living properly bread and the word of god is the biblically recommended way to live man shall not live by bread alone there is a space for bread in your life 
but there is a major space for the word of god there are many people who focus on bread as far as physical nourishment is concerned and we do not invest in living by and building our lives upon the word hallelujah in acts chapter 20 and verse 32 Paul was speaking and here's what he said. And now brethren, he said, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. I like that scripture, that the word of God, according to that scripture, does two things. Number one, it builds you up. Capacity, capacity capacity the word builds you up then number two it delivers unto you your inheritance did the bible not say according as his divine power had given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness it says through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue it says whereby are given to us great exceeding great and precious promises that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust so when you immerse yourself in the word of god you become a sign and a wonder a sign and a wonder a sign and a wonder hallelujah in Acts chapter 6 and verse 4, there was trouble from the welfare department in the early church and they wanted the apostles to come and leave the matters of the ministry of the word and prayer and to focus on serving tables and they said no appoint among yourselves men full of the holy spirit and wisdom verse 4 says but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word hallelujah is someone learning to live by and build your life on the word if you build your life just on culture you are sitting on a time bomb you build your life just on the good wishes of someone else men can change you build your life based on some kind of social cultural sentiments eventually you will be disappointed the bible talks about two men who built the issue was not the building. The issue was what the building was upon. One built upon sand, one built upon the rock. The same thing happened to both of them. The Bible says the wind came, the storms came, the rain came. That means it comes to all men. The wind, the rain, the storms. But the one that was built on a rock, it stood, it remained stable. It had longevity of impact. You will last in Jesus' name. Are you saying amen again? You will last in Jesus' name. That no one will look at your life and say you were once glorious. You were once great. That statement, Ichabod, may it be far from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Scripture. And that from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scripture, which is able to make you wise even unto salvation. Let me teach you if you care, still on that point too, there are three ways to maximize the ministry of the word. Let me just quickly add that for our knowledge. Number one, the three ways that we enjoy scripture and we maximize the ministry of the word. Number one, the study of scripture. So the first way we enjoy the ministry of the word is to be diligent to study scripture. The Bible says to study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So we study scripture. The second approach to the ministry of the word is we listen to scripture. This is very powerful. The hearing of faith comes when you allow your ears to make contact. You see, your eye gate and your ear gate are two significant gates into your spirit and into your destiny. When you study the word of God, you use your eye gate. When you listen to the word of God, you use your ear gate. You would notice in Jesus' teachings, he emphasized on the eyes and the ears. He that hath an ear, the Bible says, that means not everybody has that kind of ear. Let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. 
Are we together? So the study of scripture is the first way we engage the ministry of the word. Number two is listening to scripture. Very powerful. Thanks to technology, nobody today has an excuse for being lazy as far as engaging with scripture is concerned. There are Bibles on MP3. There are all kinds of digital formats. You can access the word of God. There are people have gone through the labor of extracting the speakings of Jesus alone. There are books of the Bible. It may take you one hour, two hours plus, maybe three hours to finish certain books. But by hearing, in 10 minutes, you can finish a book and repeat it again. So in 30 minutes, you have given yourself to the hearing that produces faith the truth is that most believers are lazy and indisciplined that is the truth because we have not we have largely now i'm speaking to the body of christ we have largely not been taught the responsibility component of our growth just because the holy spirit lives in you just because the bible is here does not mean that arbitrarily without a contribution on your own part you will grow Growth requires you engaging with the provisions that have been made available for you. Are we together? I can cook for you, but I cannot eat for you. You will need to sit down and discipline yourself to eat. Is someone learning? So you must make up your mind that you will give yourself to the study of scripture. Number two, you must make up your mind to give yourself to the listening of scripture. Number three, the third way we engage the word of God, I hope I've not lost you, I'm still discussing the word of God, is your confession of faith. Please write it down. Your confession of faith is the third way we engage the ministry of the word. My Bible, I don't know if your Bible says so, but my own Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord not just think so, not just wish so, not just assume so. It says, say so. Meaning, let the blessed of the Lord say so. Let the anointed of the Lord say so. Let the wise of the Lord say so. It's not enough to just internalize it. From the abundance of that which has been locked up in your spirit, the mouth speaks. You must sustain the courage to speak. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. A thousand shall fall by my side, ten thousand by my right side, but none shall harm me. With my eyes will I see. And is that in your Bible? Yes. And behold the reward of the wicked. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid of? Ah. The psalmist said, I lay me down and I slept. I wake. That means if I sleep, I expect to wake up. No devil will make my sleep my last time. I will sleep and I will wake up. For the Lord sustained me. Listen, if you do not know how to speak, the challenge is that most people speak empty words. They are not full of the word within their spirit. So it just becomes like a chant. Like you are chanting as, as directed by a herbalist. Speaking is supposed to be from the abundance of what is locked up within your spirit. My glory, the lifter up of my head. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But thou, O oh Lord, and a shield for me, my glory, the lifter up of my head. You get up in the morning, you don't stumble into a day you did not speak to. That is a risk. No. In the name of Jesus, as I go out, I am blessed. The hand of the Lord is upon me. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. In the name of Jesus, I call for the helpers of my destiny. They position themselves strategically helping me to fulfill the purposes of God. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Listen, the same energy it takes to complain 
is the same energy it takes to create the same energy it takes to argue the same energy it takes to tell lies is the same energy it takes to speak the truth the only reason why jesus finally died was because he refused to speak for as long as his mouth was open nobody could kill him to give himself to die he had to shut his mouth they asked him will you not speak and he kept quiet because if at all he opened his mouth to speak the grave will not receive him do you believe what you are hearing You must believe this oh you came from a poor family let a poor family not come out of you you came from a weak family let a weak family not come out of you you came from an idol worshiping family let an idol worshiping family not come out of you you make up your mind with understanding but it is by the power of speaking can i tell you i can spend all night teaching you about the potency of the word of God when it finds expression upon the lips of faith we create possibilities by the word and believe me this is not just a Pentecostal gibberish through faith Hebrews 11 and verse 3 we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God is that true John 1 and verse 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God the Bible says verse 2 the same was with God in the beginning I like verse 3 it says without him was not anything made all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made let me show you one more scripture Colossians 1 and verse 16 speaking about the supremacy of the word of God Colossians 1 16 it says for by him were all things created how many things all things means even your tomorrow is not just created by the passage of time it is created you can send the word like an usher to prepare your tomorrow and wait for you so that you enter your tomorrow with gallancy and honor you cannot do anything about yesterday but you can send the word of God as a faithful usher it will go and clear everything that is antichrist and wait for you in one minute where you are seated can you open your mouth the one scripture you know and you can remember declare it over your life in the name of Jesus Christ I am the head and not the tail is someone declaring above and not beneath in the name of Jesus declare Psalm 112 over your life blessed is the man that shared the Lord that delighted greatly in his commands his seed shall be mighty upon earth the generation of the upright shall be blessed wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endures forever when men say there is a casting down I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that there is a lifting up oh the Lord restores the years the canker worm has eaten the palmer worm I decree and declare the hand of God is upon my life Gentiles come to my light they are kings to the brightness of my rising the works of my hands are blessed blessed by the Spirit of God no limitations in my life by the power of the Holy Ghost the favor of God is at work in my life the fullness of my days I fulfill in the name of Jesus Christ no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper the Lord stands by me as a mighty terrible one hallelujah hallelujah are you learning so you're a business person you step into your store your shop your mall whatever it is in the morning and the first thing to count is not profit 
No, that's not spiritual intelligence. You take a minute and lock that door. Stretch your hands over everything there and give them life. All those to buy you, I call them to come and recognize you. In the, to come and meet you, those products, in the name of Jesus Christ. Before your children depart to school in the morning, you don't just say bye-bye, I'm looking for money. No, you call them as the priest that you are. In the name of Jesus, I place grace upon you. Go and excel above your peers. I place grace upon you. Go and return rejoicing. Listen, please hear me. The times that we live in cannot afford you being careless with your destiny again. There are wicked forces flying around waiting for people who can be careless with their spiritual life. Shout no way. No Say minus me. Minus me. Mm. Hallelujah. You want to be fruitful in this wicked world that is full of sentiments. In this wicked world where somebody can get up and say because you are a woman. Or get up and say because your skin is dark. What becomes your advantage? Already you come say from a family of idol worshippers. No. You can define your realities. And begin to reconstruct your life. After the order of scripture. The word of God is powerful. Listen, I'm not telling you something I just prepared. This is my life. Believe me. And I will not be silent. I will always worship you. As long as, as, long as I am free. My Bible says, the shouts of joy and victory shall not depart from the tent of the righteous. Listen, 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 listen. The most silent place on earth is the graveyard. Because it, silence is the ultimate proof of death. Anything that truly dies stops making sound stops moving that means one of the characteristics of life is that there must be motion and there must be sound so when you stop speaking and declaring god's word you are agreeing with satan that life has died from you hallelujah you believe this you are a man of God, go to your church as empty as it is and begin to stretch your hands across the length and the breadth of everywhere there and say, Lord, you are bringing daily as many as should be saved, as many who will be obedient to the faith, learning God under this platform and this ministry. I call them by faith in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. As powerful as Jesus is, demons did not leave just because he came. They left because he spoke. His presence, as powerful as it is, was not what drove them. His word was what drove them. Please sit down. He shall be like a tree. You see what it takes to be like that tree? That number one, You must have a systemic, consistent prayer life. And then that number two, you must live by and build your life on the word. Study of scripture. Listening to scripture, confessions of faith. Now, let me make a statement, respectfully so. I'm one person who, I appreciate technology, but let me charge you, dear believers, manage your social media exposure. If not, it will destroy your destiny in a hurry. Let me say it again. Let me apologize before I say it again. I'm sorry. 
then now I can say it. Manage your social media exposure. If not, you will destroy your life. Because there is, as it were, many voices. And none of them is without signification. Technology is a great advantage and a great tool. If and when it is used properly. But if you allow godless people and godless media spaces to indoctrinate you they will make the truths that you have learned that have framed your life to look like foolishness you will begin to erode from your life the wisdom of scripture one by one and replace it with mundane informations that may not stand the test of time everybody is speaking everybody is counseling Everybody is advising. Everybody is saying everything. Everybody is teaching how to do everything. But listen to me. My Bible says, heaven and earth will pass away. Is that in your Bible? That but the word of the Lord abides forever. Do not allow people impart upon you their mediocrity and their failure. Receive from the social media space, but you must have manage your own life have a spiritual immigration system in your life so that you can select what finally gets to your heart is someone learning don't just be a jack of all trade jumping at everything simply because so 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 celebrity or so 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 person said it with all due respect to people and their sacrifices a believer is one who has chosen at an act of your will to submit to the authority and the supremacy of scripture are we together so manage your media exposure so you don't destroy your life because of absorbing all kinds of things there are people who were well behaved until they access certain sites access certain information and it began to corrupt, deplete, and destroy their life ultimately. Listen, when God created man, as we know, Adam and Eve, he gave them a word. The first thing they heard was the word of God. And they, they were sustained by that word. When you read Genesis chapter 3, after man had fallen, the Bible says, and they heard the voice of God in the cool of the day. Are we together? And when he came... He said, Adam, where art thou? And Adam said, I heard your voice and I hid because I was naked. The next question was, who told you? You have started listening to someone other than me. Where did you get that information from? Who did you expose your ears and your attention and your destiny to? The problem was not the presence of Satan. The problem was your giving access to his speaking. Who told you? Who told you? Who told you? You were once told you are a champion. Who now told you you are a weakling? Where did you hear that from? How did you allow that to get into your spirit? Who told you? It matters whose speakings you are hearing. Who told you? There's a very popular story. I hope God is blessing you this morning. There's a very popular story. I think it's some fiction just to portray um, a message that a man was climbing a ladder he wanted to achieve accomplish a very great feat and while he was climbing it was a risk because he would have fallen and that would have been the end of it the ladder was not too strong but he was determined that he was going to get to the top and while he was climbing there were people on ground and every time he would turn back you know he was seeing people there was commotion on the ground there and you know people were beckoning on him um, and asking him to come down. Mr. Man, are you stupid? You are not aware that this journey is, is, is suicidal. You know, they were shouting. Some were encouraging him. They were motioning with their hands. And he was looking at them and smiling and giving them a thumbs up until he got to the top. And eventually, when he got to the top, people started celebrating him. When he came down, they investigated and found out he arrived because he was deaf. He was not hearing what they were saying. So while they were telling him to come down, he thought they were encouraging him to finish well. It is good to hear, but there are things you must be deaf to. Hallelujah. Is someone learning? So number one, prayer. Number two, the word. Let's do number three, and then we're done. Remember the study of scripture, listening to scripture, and your confession 
of faith. In fact, I'm tempted to show you one more scripture so that I hope you love scripture. Let's look at Isaiah 2 5, just to wrap up point two the confession of faith. Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 5. It said, O house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Walk in the light of the Lord. Walk in the light of the Lord. He said, the entrance of thy word giveth light and understanding unto the simple. That means you can walk in darkness. I hope you know he's not talking about the light of the sun. No. The light of the sun is an advantage given to everybody. But there are people who even in the day, they are still walking in darkness. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Now number three. What is the third requirement if you want to bear fruit? Are you ready? Contend for genuine spiritual empowerment. Contend for genuine spiritual empowerment. This is the third biblical key to bearing fruit. Contend for genuine spiritual empowerment. Luke chapter 1, please, 34 and 35. The young virgin visited by an angel. And the angel now brought her glad tidings. And he told her that she was going to be with child and not with the assistance of a man. And Mary was confused and she asked a very profound question. She said unto the angel, how shall this thing be, seeing that I know not a man? Years ago, when the Lord taught me this scripture, it impacted my life so much. Please go back to 34. I want you to look at that scripture. How shall this thing be? How shall an ordinary person here from this city rise and become global in ministry? Rise and become global in business? It's a question Mary was asking. How shall this unusual dimension of fruitfulness happen in my life? The answer is that which Gabriel gave her. 30 five and the angel said unto her the holy ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee the holy ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow you how will i build that house seeing that the price of things are just going up and up the holy ghost shall overshadow you and the power of the highest i mean the holy ghost shall come upon you the power of the highest shall overshadow you do you believe in the ministry of the holy spirit do you believe in the empowerment yes sir why do we need spiritual empowerment Two reasons. Number one, because it takes the power of God to fulfill your destiny and to manifest the glory of God in and through your life. The first reason why we need spiritual empowerment is that it is a requirement for the fulfillment of destiny. It is a requirement to advance the purposes of God. It is a requirement to reveal the glory of God. You cannot reveal the glory of God in the strength of the flesh. I repeat one more time. Why do you need spiritual empowerment? Because it is a requirement to fulfill your God-given, God-ordained assignment. It is a requirement to advance the purposes of the kingdom. And it is a requirement to see the glory of God revealed in your life. If you are not empowered spiritually, no matter how well-meaning, no matter how sincere you are, you will not be able to do much for the kingdom. Second reason, why do we need spiritual empowerment? Because the Bible is clear as to the fact that there are wicked demonic forces upon the earth that are determined to thwart the purposes of God in your life. Make no mistake about it, Satan is still alive. Make no mistake about it, demons are real. This is not to threaten you, but it's a truth that Jesus himself acknowledged. Hallelujah. The Bible says we are of God and the whole world lieth in wickedness. Not just your city. Relocation does not stop that reality. The whole world lieth in wickedness. Wickedness is everywhere. 
Because Moses was born, there were innocent children who were killed. Because Jesus was born, there were innocent children. If Satan did not spare babies, he would not spare you. I guarantee you, he is that determined to destroy what can be destroyed. Psalm 66 verse 3. Beautiful scripture. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. It says, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to thee. They will not submit because of sympathy. They will not submit because of sentiments. On average, the average African family has a history of some kind of demonic trado African practices. So by default, except with spiritual understanding and engaging the power of God, every family by default is at risk. There are men who will vow and say, for as long as we are alive, you will not rise. The issue is not to laugh. The issue is not to cry. You ignore them in ignorance, you will pay for it. But it takes spiritual understanding. Are we together? They looked at Jesus and Nathaniel said, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Don't blame Nathaniel. I hope you know Samson was a Nazarene. Did he last? Nazarenes had a track record of the bankruptcy of longevity of impact. Yes, they did not last at all. So when the disciples were saying, there is a Nazarene that is happening, say, forget it. There is a pattern in the, with these people. They don't last. He will not last. He will go down. Jesus did not say you are wrong because it was not a lie. But he came to redefine realities. Hmm. Are we together? There are families where the women are the men and the men are the women. They go abroad for decades and return back as if they were deported. No achievement, no accomplishment. And you find families where the whole burden is on a young lady somewhere and you find 12 men, not one has a job. Hallelujah. Yes. Don't say it does not matter. It does. How about people who do their best writing your final exam to rejoice and then you forget about everything. And then you fail and your life is reduced back to nothing. No. Listen, in this kingdom, your portion, there is a portion for everybody but it takes power. The language of victory is the language of power. Did you hear that? The language of victory is the language of power. The centurion came to Jesus and said, For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. I say to one, go, and he goes. I said to another, come, and he comes. He said, speak the word only. Jesus was so impressed by his understanding. He understood the implication of power and authority. That from one point and one direction, you can command things to begin to shift and to change across your horizon. That you do not need to come physically to my house because you are powerful and under authority. Speak the word only. That means right from where we are today, you are going to be controlling things. And listen, when it is time to pray, make sure you pray with all your heart. No looking around, dedicated attention. That everything that does not look like Christ must bow today. Every high thing must come down Every stronghold shall be broken You wear the victor's crown You overcome, you overcome Every high thing must come down Every stronghold shall be broken You wear the victor's crown You overcome, you overcome Every high thing must come down Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Hear me. There are regions where you cannot spend three years in ministry. Something must happen to you and bring you down. There are territorial spirits. I wish I were lying. I would just tell you I'm joking. You don't just jump into a territory wanting to do ministry. No, sir. 
there are controlling powers it takes authority to bring them down and to open the two leaf gates you can be in a city yet spiritually you are outside that city nothing in that city blesses you have you seen a situation where only strangers get get blessed from a city that those that are born there just because you are born there can i tell you the bible says as for the earth out of it comes bread it says the increase of the field is for all that even the king is fed by that which comes from the field when it has to do with the blessings of territory it is for everybody but it takes power for your portion to arrive to you hallelujah there are people as soon as they step into a city someone is packaging a seed to say man of God receive whereas the person giving has relatives who are in need and he will never give them one naira because you see it is what is on your head that controls what is around you the Bible says thou anointest my head he does not anoint the cup if your cup is empty don't blame the cup it's not the job it is that your head is empty thou anointest my head with oil I know what is on my head by looking at my cup if my cup is empty that cup can be your business that cup can be your job stop blaming your boss it's not your boss there is a kind of grace you have not yet received because there is a grace that when you receive even Pharaoh will give you gold after oppressing you for 430 years he will still be the one to bless you listen our possibilities in this kingdom are defined by the kinds and the levels of graces that are at work upon our lives yes you will never be the same you've touched his grace your life is changed you will never be the same you've touched his grace prophesy I will never be the same. Now, please, I want you to be sensitive. We are going to pray now. Something from heaven is about to rest upon your destiny. This is the moment where Saul is turned to Paul. This is the moment where Cephas is turned to Peter. Hallelujah. Please help those under the anointing. If someone is under the anointing close to you, whether you are an usher or not, just help them so that they don't have to injure themselves. I want you to listen, please. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 33, the Bible says, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection and great grace was upon how many? All. When it has to do with the distribution of graces, everybody is a recipient. With great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and great grace was upon them all. Now, please listen. There are two ways to receive genuine spiritual empowerment if you miss this one you have missed a major part of this teaching there are two ways I want you to listen please listen listen because for someone what you kept seeing in your dreams is about to happen now those those visions of empowerment that you have had for a long time God is about to make it manifest right now there are two biblical ways to receive the anointing to receive genuine impartation genuine empowerment are you ready number one you can receive directly from God through encounters 
directly from God through encounters. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. The first five words thereabout says, How God anointed Jesus Christ. Who anointed him? God. How God anointed Jesus Christ. How God anointed Jesus or Jesus of Nazareth. You can receive directly from God through an encounter. An example of such in the Bible was Solomon. The man Solomon went to bed having offered a thousand bond offerings and God came to him by himself and asked Solomon for what he would desire and he desired a wise and an understanding heart. My God, I'm seeing fire. This is what I'm seeing now. I'm just seeing fire rest upon people. Fire. I'm going to be praying shortly, but please let me encourage you again. When I begin to pray, whether you are an usher or not, please, once someone is under the anointing close to you, I want you to do well to just hold them. If I ask that you bring them out, then you do. Otherwise, you just hold them where you are. Praise the name of the Lord. Directly from God through encounters, Moses wakes up from sleep and an empowerment of wisdom and understanding heart had been released upon him. There are two ladies now who will shout loud under the anointing. Please, I want you to hold those ladies gently and bring them out now. I just had in my spirit. Bring them out. Kali shalako sabranda barato sabregedeshi. Kala praga baru sadibashiata. Please hold them carefully so they don't. Um, in the name that is above all names, I'm going to pray for you. But let me just respond to something I'm seeing in my spirit. I just saw like a chain breaking and I'm seeing the number 15. I don't know where they are, but I want you to bring them out right now. I stretch my hands. Everyone who has been a victim of every oppression of darkness, let the chain be broken now. Let the apartheid break it out. Let that chain be broken now. Let that chain help them, please. Let that chain be broken now. 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 Bring them out. Shalabaka paroka tesevregadish. The Lord is showing me families here that have been tied down for many years and it looks like they cannot go forward. Fire from heaven is coming upon someone now. I decree and declare every family the apakatos kete barata be delivered now. I stand upon the grace that is on this altar and I decree and declare be delivered now 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 hear me the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty there is liberty i'm hearing in my spirit destroy delay over women i don't know the ladies in which family it looks like there is no advancement i stretch my hands wherever you are let that grace bring you freedom now let that grace bring you freedom now let that grace bring you freedom now Shabaka parata ba shalaka tafraska krata kata paranda ga shabranda ga debala kato skada bala na ba shabranda ga barata shabara kosiata.
is someone angry in his spirit this morning is a moment of encounter hallelujah 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 we're still going to pray i will give you the second key now but i'm seeing the number 11 and the lord is saying there are many many people here you are the one the mantle is on to lift your family i don't know who that person is men and women right now the anointing is coming on you take that grace now you are the deliverer ordained by god to lift your family ordained i don't know where that person is but may that grace rest upon you you are the one ordained by god as the joseph as the deborah to set your family free financially spiritually you are empowered right now in the name of jesus christ hallelujah 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 who is by the name olua kemi is there someone with that name such a olua kemi you are wearing like a black sweater or something who is that please verify are you a member of this church you came for the conference what's your name I'm not Yoruba. I don't even know. I'm just saying what God. Do we have another mic? I will pray for you. Don't worry. What he says to one, he says to all. What is your name, my dear? Olua Kemi. I will pray for you. Don't worry. In the name of Jesus Christ everything that does not represent the counsel of God in your life I stand upon the grace that is in this house and I decree and declare right now Olua Kemi be set free now be set free now now by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus now the Lord is showing me someone I'm seeing one two three four like six years is it you or your relative you have been trusting God for the fruit of the womb this is six years who is that person your season has come six years six please just listen to the instruction six years you've been trusting God make sure you are married six years six years your sister i want to pray how many of you believe that god is able to give children believe it oh huh did your bible not say children are a heritage from the lord that by this time next year convention there are people who will come rejoicing and say look what god is able to do hear me let me use this two as a point of contact anyone here called barren in the name that is above all names according to the time of life return with miracle children i say it again according to the time of life return with miracle children in the name of jesus christ now I told you there are two ways to receive spiritual empowerment number one is through a direct encounter from God number two is through impartation 
from genuine careers impartation from genuine careers impartation from genuine careers I want to pray a serious prayer now the Lord is giving me the prompting I want to release the grace for speed please hear me many people do not know the unit of destiny is time whatever takes away time from you has taken away a part of your life are we together now when I pray this prayer let me say this so that you will understand it is not unusual to find people begin to run please help them it's nothing superstitious or extra biblical it is just a prophetic act by the Holy Spirit to demonstrate that which God is doing so if for any reason you find someone running under the anointing please hold them so they don't injure themselves in as much as we are receiving we have a responsibility to help manage what God is doing I don't know who has suffered delay here whose destiny has refused to move in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands right now let that grace for speed rest on you now receive that grace for speed receive that grace for speed please help them receive that grace for speed speed in business help that lady help that lady help that lady receive the grace for speed speed in the name of Jesus speed in business speed in ministry speed in business speed in the name of Jesus every delay I cause it now caused by witchcraft I cause it now caused by manipulations I cause it now every family that has suffered and struggled every ministry here receives speed 10 years in one year 10 years in one year one year in one month in the name of Jesus Christ hear me I stand in faith and upon the grace of our father and our mother the grace that has helped this vision for 35 years some of you were not even born may that same grace rest on you now may that same grace rest on you now rest on your children now hear me it's not a blessing to be building a house for 15 years that is no longer a testimony I'm praying for you again that in the name of Jesus the same grace that came upon Elijah that made him run and overtake the chariots of Ahab down to Israel may that grace rest on someone now now hear me please let's wrap up hear me let me have your attention please listen please listen when it has to do with receiving the anointing from careers there are two biblical requirements just those that are upon great men are not even the people close to them that's why I want to teach you what you are hearing now there are two biblical conditions for grace to be transferred genuinely number one is called honor you will never receive impartation from a grace that you despise and dishonor number two service honor and service elisha was never supposed to be a prophet elisha was a farmer the next prophet was supposed to be among the sons of the prophet who were being trained but Elisha honored his way into that grace served his way into that grace this is why I salute all the workers in this church and those who are diligently serving it is more than just standing by a man of God you are programming yourself into a realm of superior impartations hallelujah I heard a story in a pastor's conference many many years ago this is the story that a man of God and his dear wife 
he was blessing people in church and increasing people he would speak and people would return with results but in his own house things were going down his own house the man of god himself nothing was happening in his house yet in church if he makes a declaration doors will open up one day during a service just like this his wife walked out of church just walked out and left church and people were sad ah, what has happened now the man finished service and he hurriedly finished counseling and he rushed back home honey what is wrong did i offend you did i say something she didn't say a word to him he sat down at the table to eat and then the woman was bringing the food to her husband and he noticed that the tray she used was different it was not the usual tray follow carefully and when she was serving she used the plates you know women have their holy of holies plates that one that stays until duty really calls and she brought it out and the man was saying what is all this drama you are doing we've been married for years please bring my food i'm hungry and finally when she dropped the last item on the table she got down and said servant of god my family is in trouble this is a woman married to her husband though but she said maybe i've been relating with my husband that's why things have not changed and she knelt down she said servant of god this is not husband now my family that same grace that works only in church you need to bring it into my home and according to the man he said an anointing rested on him and he laid his hands on his wife and this is his own home can i tell you i said that to say something there are many of you who are related to anointed people by bloodline that's why you will never receive anything because you are only receiving from a brother there are some of you who were even who had the privilege listen carefully to have associated with anointed people for a long time if you do not know the difference you will get into trouble a thousand times you never receive from a grace you despise there are many of you who have not received the grace that is upon our father and our mother in spite of what god has done around them and is doing around them across the globe respectfully speaking you may be a faithful member in the church but somebody will come with a heart of honor in five minutes he has received this grace and he will leave and you will be wondering is the reason why members hardly testify you see that most people who testify are they came honoring the man when they declared they received but most people say this one i last week we were in their house i want to pray for you and take away everything that looks like familiarity take it away from your life and it, it, it has nothing to do with kneeling down or standing up. You can kneel down and still be standing. You see, this thing is a hard thing. Hallelujah. Two things I want to do within the next five minutes or so and then I'm done. Number one is I want to pray for the sick. We may not have the opportunity to take testimonies, but you can testify in other sessions. And then finally, I will be standing on the grace while i'm standing here only god knows what i've received here for my own self too i'm not stupid i've not done ministry for 35 years i would be stupid to only come here and preach alone no sir for you are glorious and worthy to be praised you are the Lamb. Upon the throne And unto you We lift our voice to say You are the Lamb Upon the throne Hallelujah Now I'm going to pray for you right where you are if you are trusting God for a miracle, just lay your hands. Lay your hands right where you are trusting God for a miracle. Lay your hands. No, you don't have to come out, my friend. I'm seeing you holding a crutch. But you just believe and then check yourself. Don't be, don't be under pressure at all. We're not stage managing this. Okay. Place your hand where you are trusting God for a miracle. You can also stand for someone. 
maybe some loved one that you know you may not be sick yourself but you are able to stand for someone and as I pray I want you to believe I believe in the God who heals I truly do I truly do I truly do I am a product of his healing power I know what he's able to do father in the name of Jesus here at this 35th convention by the power that raised Christ from the dead I rebuke every spirit of infirmity right now I rebuke every spirit of infirmity right now I rebuke every spirit of infirmity right now I decree and declare over everyone here who is sick in the name of Jesus from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet be healed now be healed now be healed now blood diseases be healed now eye conditions be healed now ulcers be healed now bone conditions be healed now if you are deaf in one or both ears I command your ears to be open now everything wrong with your blood your organs I decree and declare be cleansed now in the name of Jesus every lump and any growth roaming around any part of your body in the name that is above all names I speak over you let that demonic growth disappear now let it disappear now in the name of Jesus pain in the back I declare be healed now there's someone you are I think it looks like you are SS and you have repeated pains around your joints I declare let the power of God touch you and let healing rest upon you now there is a lady whether it is your monthly circle or not you have very very severe bleeding and this has caused you serious problem I command that devil plaguing you by whatever name it is called it departs from your body now it departs from your body now the Lord is showing me a lady there is like a lump at the left side of your breast in Jesus name I don't care how long it has been there I command that wicked spirit to depart from your body now pile there's someone suffering from pile the Lord is bringing you healing now there's something called gastritis in the name of Jesus I decree and declare be healed from that condition now the Lord is showing me someone you don't sleep up to two three hours if for any reason you wake up in the night that is the end of it until morning I don't know who that person is but in the name of Jesus that demonic condition comes to an end now now whether I mention your case or not in the name of Jesus I'm hearing autism anybody with a child whether here or following online that is suffering from any kind and any level of autism in the name of Jesus let the power that raised Christ from the dead rest upon that child now now whether I mention your case or not in the name of Jesus be healed your loved ones at home I declare healing for them your relatives overseas I declare healing for them for in Jesus matchless name we have prayed now for all those who find out that a miracle has happened we may not have the time for you to testify now but do well to check yourself you need to visit a doctor for verification please do so and then you can always testify 
to the glory of God. Testimonies are very, very important. Hallelujah. Now for the final blessing, I want to speak over your life. And then I want to, standing on the grace again of our Father and our Mother and the Lord, I want to speak over everything that has refused to give way. I want you to receive in the next one, two minutes. Let your heart be opened. Prophetic words are very, very powerful. Are you ready? Let me start with a prayer I prayed for you yesterday. That every door that has been closed over your life, in the name of Jesus, by whatever form and whatever fashion, I speak to that door, be opened now. Number two, you may have heard me say that all blessings come from God through men to men. All blessings come from God through men to men. That means if God says yes and the man to partner with him says no, your yes remains in the realm of the spirit. It will never be made manifest. It is the spirit and the bride that says come. There are many of you God has said yes. But the human agent to agree and say yes so that that which has left heaven will reach you is not there let me call them forth by prophecy every destiny helper that has not showed up i speak to the north the east the west and the south may they show up in your life in this season may they show up in your life in this season in the name of jesus christ Amen. exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 and i will give these people favor in the sight of the egyptians and it shall come to pass that when ye go help me ye shall not go empty emptiness has an explanation it means the favor of god is not yet upon you i decree and declare everything that looks like emptiness in your finances and in your life in the name of jesus christ receive favor now receive favor now receive favor now of oh, jesus i compel them to bless you bountifully Number three, let me prophesy Psalm 112 as we wrap up. It says, blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. He said, his seed shall be mighty upon earth. In the name of Jesus, your children will not be weak. <laughs> then he says, the generation of the upright shall be blessed. He says, wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endures forever. I decree and declare, everything called shame, reproach, that has been connected to you and your family, that reproach drops off you now. It drops off you now. Hallelujah. The Lord has helped our father and our mother, and for over three decades spanning to the fourth, he has kept them in joy and vibrancy. Hallelujah. As much as they have advanced in age, they are still agile and bubbling in strength. Let's tap from their grace and let me speak over someone that the devil already wants to bring to cut short the longevity of your impact. You are only four years and everything is shaking in your life. I decree and declare the grace that has given them stability for all these years if you have the faith to believe may that same grace rest upon you now <laughs> hallelujah the lord has given them global visibility right from here he has announced them to the world needed and sought after by all and sundry i don't know what has kept you hidden i don't know what has covered your glory gifted but covered grace but hiding let that same grace for visibility rest upon you now hear me many of you after this conference strangers you do not know around the world will place demand upon your grace in the name of jesus christ 
Hallelujah. Two more blessings and we're done. I want you to listen carefully. Do you believe in financial prosperity? Yeah. Do you hate poverty? Yeah. Hate it too. Hate it. Hate it. We don't market materialism and the promotion of flesh and self, but by all means, for the sake of you and all those connected to you, refuse to be poor. Are we together? Now, when it has to do with the subject of the blessing of the Lord, there are many dimensions to it. There is a dimension of value, transformation, diligence, relationships. These are all factors that add together to cause you to be prosperous. But there is the prophetic dimension of wealth. This is what I want to speak over your life. It says, and by a prophet, the Lord God brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet they were preserved he says believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established believe in his prophets there are times where you have to farm and be patient and allow the crops to grow that is the natural cause but there is still a dimension in scripture called by this time tomorrow in the name of Jesus I declare over someone in addition to your diligence in addition to your hard work in addition to your transformation in addition to educating your mind in addition to all your certificates i stand upon the grace of our father again and i declare over someone literally by this time tomorrow may my god surprise you may my god surprise you may my god lift you may my god empower you may my god wipe shame from your eyes in the name of Jesus final prayer there is a grace called honor please listen when Moses was about to impart upon Joshua as mandated by God he said call Joshua the son of Nun in whom there is a spirit and he says lay your hands upon him and he says take some of your honor and transfer to him so that the people will hearken to him do you know what honor means honor means to be perceived to match your true worth and to be rewarded within the same proportion that means it is possible that people can perceive you less than your true worth to be honored means that you are upgraded in the minds of men to match your true worth and that they reward you to match that correct perception on how God has lifted you. That is the reason why in blessing Abraham, he blessed both Abraham and his name. If you are great alone and your name is not great, you are in trouble because your name has to be great for all those who come after you to leverage on that name. That is the reason why Jesus gave us his name. Not just his life. He says, I will bless you. Is that in your Bible? Genesis chapter 12. I will make your name great. If you are great, your greatness ends with you. But when your name is great, people can stand upon your name. That is why we hardly have brands that are 100 years old within Africa. Because we have great men, but there are hardly great names. Are you ready to receive that grace? Yes, At the end of your life, your name can be a padlock or a key. It can close the doors of everybody behind you. And they say, what name did you call? God forbid. In 1971, this name caused pain and it will lock a door. And yet there are others. When you are about to be thrown out, you will mention a name and the man will remember. And say you are connected to that name, come back. I shouldn't have helped you but for this name I decree and declare in the name that is above all names the grace that makes for honor that blesses men and blesses their names may that grace rest upon you may that grace rest upon you from today begin to bear fruit through a robust prayer life in the name of Jesus Christ begin to bear fruit by giving diligence to the Word of God and finally this grace that has rested upon your life let it speak loud and clear
in the name of Jesus. Now I want to Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.